Now that we have estimated the volume of concrete for the auger cost uh, piles that we have in this project, the next step is to estimate the continuous footing that goes on top of these um, auger cost piles. So if we go under the notes here, we see that there is a, a legend, uh, dashed lines, solid, uh, dark black, it says concrete grade beam, GB1, C beam scheduled on sheet S6. So this uh, grade beam goes ar around the perimeter of the building, the entire perimeter, and also underneath the uh, walls or part of the structure uh, under the concrete slabs. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do the estimate of that uh, grade beam. Uh, we'll look at uh, drawing S6 to see um, what information can we get from that grade beam. We look at the uh, grade beam schedule down here. So it says uh, GB1, which is our uh, grade beam. It's at a uh, elevation of uh, minus three feet. The size of this uh, grade beam is uh, 18 inches by 24 inches. So these um, are the dimensions. It has the reinforcement number three. Uh, I mean, it has three number seven at the bottom and three number seven on the top. So if there is a total of uh, six number seven bars running continuously on the length of that uh, that foundation. It does have also ties uh, number three at every uh, 10 inch on center. So we need to estimate that um, that grade beam and uh, understand how the grade beam is uh, located in the uh, foundation. For that we could look at uh, drawing S4 uh, S again uh, looking back at our uh, section 1 that we discussed before with the piles we can see the cross section of the grade beam so we see the three uh, number 7 on the bottom and the three number 7 on the top tied together with uh, number 3 ties uh, as uh, per the uh, table, the schedule, it has um, every 10 inches we will find those ties. So let's go ahead and uh, estimate uh, the volume of this great beam. Uh, the best way to estimate the volume is to multiply the length of the, um, the section, the, the length of the foundation times the cross section, which is this rectangle over here. Uh, we saw before the dimensions of that rectangle in S6, so that is 18 inches wide by 24 inches high. So those are the dimensions of the uh, great beam GB1. We have uh, in, in this, uh, this drawing uh, shows a uh, 4 inch in addition to the 24 inches high. So that uh, is a, a note that should be sent to the uh, architect because on this uh, cross section it looks like the great beam is actually a little bit bigger. It looks like it's 2 feet 4 inches. But that may be only at the point of the uh, pile cast. Perhaps uh, the rest of the uh, length, the grade beam will be then 2 feet by uh, 18 inches. Uh, in any event, we are going to assume for the purpose of this course that uh, the cross section of the grade beam is uh, 18 inches wide by 24 inches uh, tall. The plan layout uh, can be found on drawing S2. So what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, estimating the length of this continuous uh, foundation. We're going to create a new condition by clicking on the plus sign. This is going to be a linear condition because we're going to measure the length of the great beam. The name, uh, we can use GB1 as the Great Beam 1. 
the thickness of these uh, lines is going to be the thickness of the grade beam, which is uh, 18 inches. So I'm going to type here 18. On the notes, I am going to type here uh, grade beam GB1 with uh, 18 inches wide by 24 inches high with three number seven on bottom and three number seven on top with ties number three every 10 inches on center. So that's going to be the note that I have for this foundation. We click apply and OK and now the cursor is uh, as a crosshairs uh, noticing that we are in uh, takeoff mode. So I'm going to start with the edge of this uh, foundation and I'm going to drag my mouse all the way to the opposite edge of this foundation. So I have measured this length on that um, footing which is 19 uh, linear feet if we can see that uh, right here on the left side. So now to continue uh, measuring uh, I am going to start right on the inner edge of this uh, foundation and I'm just going to cross uh, all the way to this uh, point here. Notice that I did not start on the left side because if I had done that then this small rectangle will have been uh, double counted. We don't want to double count the corners so we have to be careful in uh, starting the new section right after the uh, sections where we ended so we do not double count a uh, section of the uh, foundation. If I am going to, est to now uh, do the takeoff of this vertical, or not vertical, this uh, north south uh, foundation, I will start on the inner edge and then move all the way to the inner edge here and then again from this inner edge to the outside of the foundation. I continue the uh, takeoff by going from this uh, inner edge to this uh, inner edge over here and then uh, I will let you continue uh, to take off uh, all the um, grade beam 1 uh, required for this uh, building. The next step is to take the information uh, that we just measured with on-screen takeoff into our Excel file. In our previous example with the uh, auger uh, cost files, we mainly enter the data into Excel. I am going to present a slightly different version of that uh, method. We're going to enter in our uh, general estimating template. We are going to use the tab OST to enter in here the information that is coming directly from on-screen takeoff. So this is what we are going to do. Please uh, pay careful attention to this procedure because if you do not follow it to the exact uh, description you will not be able to successfully enter the information from on-screen takeoff into Excel. We are going to start by clicking on the takeoff tab in on-screen takeoff. This brings this uh, tab that has the uh, condition number, the name of the condition, height, area, quantity 1, unit of measure 1, quantity 2, unit of measure 2, quantity 3, unit of measure 3, and some notes. Note that uh, here this note is what we entered before. So if we want to take this into Excel, what we will do is we will click on the uh, cell that is on the bottom right uh, of that cell. We will click over there and we will hold the button of the mouse uh, pressed. Then we will drag the cursor all the way to this uh, unassigned name here and then we're going to release the button of the mouse. When we do that, this text changes in uh, color. So now the black, uh, the, the back uh, 
the background of the text is blue and the letters are white, we right click on this uh, rectangle and then we copy that information. We go onto Excel, uh, we open our general estimating template, we go under uh, OST and uh, we select a cell that it's uh, empty uh, below the numbers and then we go paste and we paste only the text. This is what's called a paste special. If your columns are not uh, within the width, uh, you can select the entire sheet by clicking on the intersection of the rows and column and then double click on the width of one of the columns and that's going to make the width of all the columns to fit in the widest text that you have. So we have uh, condition number one. This is the 14-inch uh, cast pile uh, that we estimated before. And then we have condition two, GB1, which is the continuous footing that we just estimated. This is how you can bring the takeoff from on-screen takeoff into your template in Excel. We will next see how to use these for the purpose of uh, estimating the cost.